have before me $35 of groceries from Dollar Tree and this is everything I'm going to be eating this week. The only things I have that are not shown here are oil, salt, and pepper and that's common practice with any of my budget grocery videos is that those are the only household ingredients that I consider to be staples and that I use in my recipes beyond what I have purchased at Dollar Tree. This is technically the third version of this that I've done. I've done an eating for $10 a week. Uh, I think I've done that twice and then I've done a $27.50 a week and you may be asking yourself why $35 and that was because I wanted to have some room to incorporate some snacks and some drinks and some things that I feel like make living on a budget more tolerable. So this isn't necessarily about how to eat for the absolute cheapest that you possibly can, more so than it is about eating a realistic lifestyle and still having some wiggle room for some things that you enjoy and just being able to stick within the budget and still eat from Dollar Tree. So with all that being said, let's talk about everything that I got and then we'll get started on breakfast. So for the actual groceries, I have three bags of frozen vegetables. We have green beans, mixed vegetables, and seasoning blend. I also have a bag or a loaf of garlic bread. I have some sausage, beef patties, mozzarella cheese, corn tortillas, pasta sauce. I've got some dry black beans, some dry white rice. I have biscuit mix, gravy mix. I have some vegetable bouillon powder, some Alfredo sauce, taco seasoning, penne pasta. I also have some pancake mix, soy sauce, and rotel. As far as funsies go, I picked up some of this cherry limeade gelatin. This is like Sonic brand. I got some extra butter popcorn, some knockoff Nutty Buddy bars, some knockoff Takis, and then for a beverage, I got some lemonade mix and some tea bags. The first meal I'm gonna be making is my personal favorite, which is biscuits and gravy. This is gonna feed me for three days. Let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with a packet of biscuit mix and I'm gonna add a half a cup of water. And I did go ahead and preheat my oven to 400 degrees. Biscuit mix is combined. I'm going to drop this into six rather large drop biscuits so I can have two biscuits per day for three days. And try to get them relatively even in size but if they're not perfect it's totally fine I'll just distribute them as evenly as I can I tend to crumble my biscuits anyways whenever I'm doing uh, biscuits and gravy so like I said it's not that big of a deal but as long as they're kind of similar in size which it looks like they are about the same size I'm gonna wait for my oven to preheat and then I'll bake these for about 18 minutes or so until they're golden brown. And while that's happening, we can work on our sausage gravy. My biscuits are in the oven and my skillet is preheated over medium high heat. I'm gonna brown up my sausage. My sausage is nicely brown. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the drippings in the pan so it'll further flavor my gravy. And turn the heat down a smidge too. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in the gravy mix. I have mixed the packet of gravy with two cups of cold water. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour that in. I'm just gonna let this cook and thicken up over like medium, medium high heat-ish. And then I'll probably put a lid on it and set it off to the side while the biscuits finish baking. It always takes a little bit longer for the biscuits than it does for the sausage gravy. But once everything is browned up and thickened up, we are ready to eat breakfast. Biscuits are golden brown on top. They actually only took about 10 minutes this time in the oven and they look pretty good. So let's go ahead and plate up our breakfast. Go ahead and put down two biscuits. It doesn't really matter which ones we pick. I like to crumble my biscuits. That's just personal preference rather than like slicing them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this is what I've always done. Even if I get biscuits and gravy from a restaurant, I just crumble the biscuits with my fingers and then serve the gravy over top. Not centered there. This is good and hot and I am starving. So I am definitely ready for this breakfast. It's actually almost lunchtime. 
by the time I'm eating this just because of how today, <laughs> how today's filming has gone. But the other four biscuits, I'm gonna put in a container and save them for tomorrow and the following day. And I'll do the same with the leftover gravy as well. Here's my nice thick and beautiful sausage gravy. Oh, I'm so excited for this. By far, this is my favorite breakfast of all time. Sausage gravy biscuits are such a big deal in the South. Go ahead and douse that in some gravy. Ooh, looks like about enough. And then I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, I'm just gonna put the rest of this in a container and let it cool. And this will be my breakfast for the next couple of days. So overall, I am feeling much more confident about this week's groceries than I have in the past because I've incorporated a lot of my personal favorite foods. Also have dry rice and beans, which I think will make a big difference in making me feel full. I know rice and beans are kind of overrated in the budget community, but we're gonna do some fun things with them that are not like kind of your traditional rice and beans. So don't worry about that. In the meantime, time for breakfast. I'm such a savory breakfast girl. I would hands down rather have a savory than a sweet breakfast. So, and I'm more of a sausage girl than a bacon or a ham. I also really like liver mush. Wish you could buy that at Dollar Tree, but you cannot. <laughs> so I'm gonna go sit at my desk and eat this while I finish working. So the next thing I wanna do is brew some iced tea. Now I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. I have no idea how to make tea. Um, I've never really done it before. I've bought tea maybe all of like three or four times in my life. I've worked in restaurants, but they always have a tea maker. Like you put the tea bag in, you fill it up with water. Um, so we're gonna experiment with this. I'll probably look up some kind of guides on how to make iced tea. And my plan is to mix the iced tea with these lemonade packets and sort of make like a mock Arnold Palmer. So that's kind of been one of my favorite combinations lately is uh, sugar-free lemonade with tea, unsweetened tea. So hopefully this turns out, I guess we'll see. I am just gonna boil some water in my coffee pot and then we're just gonna steep the tea and then, I don't know, we're, <laughs> we're just gonna play around with this. But yeah, let me go put some water in my coffee pot and I'll be right back. I actually boiled myself a second little pitcher of water just because the first one still had some residual like coffee in it so this one looks pretty clean and i'm following this recipe which says four cups of water to about three tea bags and then it says to pour it over four cups of ice so we're gonna try that and see how that works i kind of expected that i would need more tea bags than that but if i only need three that's perfect i'll have some residual left over if this turns out but these I'm not really quite sure. It also says two to three large tea bags, and I don't really think that classifies as a large, so maybe I do need more than three. Hmm. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna just wing it here, and I think I'm gonna put six in. Just uh, going based on the assumption that this is not technically a large tea bag. I think this is just a standard. And I'm gonna be pouring this over ice, so I feel like six will help to make sure it's like diluted to the right strength, I guess. I'm like debating, do I go ahead and add eight? I don't mind if it's a little strong. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. We have four cups of water. I'm gonna add eight tea bags under the assumption I'm gonna be pouring this over four cups of ice. So it'll make eight total cups of tea. So eight tea bags makes the most sense to me. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> and I'm gonna let this steep for five minutes. The tea has steeped. I'm gonna remove all the tea bags. I know you're technically not supposed to wring them out, so I guess I won't. I'm just gonna drip them down. I'm just gonna move those out of the way. And then I already have my pitcher with four cups of ice in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that over the top. got myself a bottle of water here. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that with one of my lemonade packets. And then we're gonna try this and see how it turns out. So I'm gonna make 
make this exactly how I usually make it when I get it at like a store or a restaurant and that's about halfway full with unsweetened tea. And then I'll top it off with the lemonade. Make sure that's totally dissolved. Moment of truth. Did I do a good job at making the tea? Looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's totally decent. It's not as good as the one I usually get from Sheets, but I think the tea could have been a little bit stronger, honestly. So next time I make a batch, I'll probably put a couple of extra tea bags in it. But otherwise, this is pretty good. I literally just made that tea like five minutes ago, but I kind of just realized it's lunchtime. And so I'm gonna get that going. There are some things that I have to prep tonight for the rest of the week, like the dry beans and rice and stuff like that. Um, I didn't really plan a whole lot of quick meals, but I do have the stuff to make the garlic bread pizza. I obviously got stuff to make pasta. That's pretty quick. But some of the stuff is gonna have to wait until tomorrow when I actually have time to do the prep work involved in making it. So I think we're gonna have garlic bread pizza for lunch. This is gonna be so simple guys because I'm just using a loaf of garlic bread, some mozzarella cheese, and some Hunt's garlic and herb pasta sauce. I'll save the rest of the garlic and herb pasta sauce for when I actually make the pasta. I'm probably only going to be using a fraction of this and I'm only going to be preparing half of one of these garlic breads today so I'm only going to grate half the cheese. So I've kind of talked about this before when I've done other kind of budget menus and one of the important things is kind of a degree of self rationing when it comes to more expensive ingredients or I guess you could say less um, filling ingredients like in this example cheese. You're not getting a whole lot for a dollar so we're going to try to stretch it and that's why I'm only going to shred half the block now and I'll shred the other half later. I sometimes find that when you shred the whole block at one time, you sometimes use more than you anticipate using and it gets a little bit harder to stretch things out. And so I know it's a little bit more time consuming to do it this way. Uh, feel free to of course shred the whole block and just use it as you need to. But in my case, I feel like I'll get a little bit more bang for my buck out of it if I only shred what I intend to use when I intend to use it. Um, yeah, so I'm only gonna be making half of one of these right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the other half in the freezer. This one's kinda, I gotta try to give it a flat spot so it'll actually sit on my baking sheet. I might just have to bake it <laughs> kind of off to one side slightly so it stands upright as it bakes. So I actually think in this case, I'm gonna bake it first. So I have to bake it for six to eight minutes until it's golden brown. So I'm probably gonna do that. Then I'll put on the sauce and the cheese and I'll bake it again so it's nice and crisp. Garlic bread's good and toasty. Hopefully you guys can see that. And I'm gonna go ahead and top it with some of my pasta sauce. I like sauce, so I'm not really being sparing on this. I want it to be good and saucy like a nice French bread pizza. And I'm gonna go ahead and top that with my cheese. I didn't really have any other use for the cheese. I mean, I could put it on the pasta and stuff, but I mostly just intended to use it to make this garlic bread pizza, so. That is what we're doing. I'm gonna load it up. It's gonna be good and cheesy and melty. And off camera, I do have some green beans boiling in some vegetable bouillon. I just didn't really quite feel like roasting them or doing any of that. So that will be my side to go with my pizza. Here is the garlic bread pizza. I did bake that in the oven and then finished it under the broiler for a couple minutes just to get like a nice toasty cheese on top there. I'm gonna slice this up probably into like quarters and it's gonna have to cool before I eat it. You gotta cut these things quick. Okay, two and three. There we go. Got my green beans already cooked. Those are probably a little cold by now because they've been chilling. But there is my lunch. So for the green beans, as I mentioned, I just boiled those in like a teaspoon of vegetable bouillon and when they came out, I drained them and then I seasoned them with a little bit of salt and pepper. 
They are quite soft, which I typically like for green beans. I'm really glad that I got green beans because they're honestly hands down one of my favorite like vegetables to eat as just a vegetable. So good. And now for the garlic bread pizza. Hopefully it's not gonna burn my mouth. I'm still recovering from the gumbo <laughs> incident, so I'm being careful. Yep, that hits the spot. Hot. <laughs> I think we have a good lunch here. I'm gonna go sit and eat and I will be back at dinner time. So the way I planned the snacks was that I have two sweet snacks and two salty snacks and I should have enough here that I can have one salty and one sweet snack each day throughout the week. So I think I'm gonna start by having some of these Nutty Buddy bars and this will be my afternoon snack and then probably later tonight I'll watch a movie and have some popcorn. Now I don't think you necessarily need to watch me eat a Nutty Buddy bar to know that this is good. They're a little bit lighter in flavor than the name brand, not quite as peanut buttery, but they're still really good and you get four of these like two packs in the box. So this will last me four days and I'm totally fine with that. It's officially dinner time and I think I've decided for dinner that I'm going to make Alfredo pasta. And I just wanted to come on here real quick and say that this is probably one of the first times I have done one of these budget grocery week videos where I didn't really feel hungry or deprived, especially on the first day. So I think that really speaks volumes about how I'm approaching this one uh, differently, you know, with regards to not just breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but also having beverages and snacks and things like that. So food is obviously physical, but it's also mental too. And so far, you know, I'm three quarters of the way through the first day and I feel totally fine. Like I said, I'm gonna be making a one pot Alfredo pasta. I'm gonna be using the ingredients I'm showing here. I did forget to show the smoked sausage when I showed what I got this morning. It was just kind of tucked away in my fridge and I missed it. But yeah, smoked sausage, some seasoning blend. I may throw in some Rotel, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, I also have the penne pasta, the Alfredo sauce, and the only other ingredient is gonna be the vegetable bouillon. So most likely I'm going to try to make enough of this pasta that I can have for dinner tonight and maybe for lunch tomorrow. That way my breakfast and my lunch is already prepped and the only thing I'll have left is dinner. So I'm probably just gonna use one of these two sausage links and save the other one for another dish. But I'm gonna go ahead I think I'm gonna dice this. Um, sometimes I cut it on the diagonal just because it looks nicer, but sometimes I just dice it because it's simpler. I've got my skillet preheated with a splash of oil, so I'm gonna start by browning my sausage. My sausage is starting to get some good color to it, so I'm gonna dump in a few other ingredients. Starting with one cup of the frozen seasoning blend. I'm also gonna add in a spoonful of my rotel, maybe two spoonfuls. One cup of my penne pasta. Two cups of water. And a teaspoon of my vegetable bouillon powder. Maybe a teaspoon and a half. I'm gonna let this come up to a boil and then I'm gonna cover and simmer it for about 12 minutes. About halfway through the 12 minute cook time, I'm just going to give it a quick stir, make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom and pasta is looking amazing and then I'm just gonna let that finish simmering. When it comes to making a one pot pasta, there's always gonna be a point where the liquid is below the line of pasta, but as long as you keep a lid on there, you're essentially going to steam the pasta. So the pasta doesn't have to stay covered in water the entire time. It can be peeking out, it won't dry out because the steam 
will keep everything moist and continue to cook the pasta. It has been 12 minutes. The pasta is done cooking. And you can see most of the liquid has absorbed. There is a little bit of liquid left, but that's starchy pasta water. It's got our vegetable bouillon in it. There's no reason to drain this. I'm gonna go ahead and stir in some of the Alfredo sauce. How much Alfredo sauce? I'm not really quite sure yet. I'm just gonna add, I'll start with adding maybe four big spoonfuls, about half the jar or half the can. And I'll stir that in and see if I need to add any more. I do think I'm gonna add one more big spoonful. And honestly, this looks pretty fantastic to me. The only thing I would say that it would potentially need would be some Parmesan cheese, but let's go ahead and give it a taste and see if we need to add any salt or pepper to it. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really expect that to turn out as good as it did. I am gonna add some pepper to it, but otherwise, this is ready to eat. I'm gonna go ahead and put half of this in a bowl. That looks about like half. And then the other half I'm gonna put into a container for my lunch tomorrow. If it does end up a little dry tomorrow, I'll just add a little bit more water to it when I go to reheat it. But that's kind of redundant because we'll talk about that tomorrow when I actually do go to reheat this. I really did not expect this to turn out as good as it did. So I'm really impressed with this. I had no idea what I was gonna cook for dinner and I didn't want dinner to be boring. You know, it's the first day I wanted to make something kind of exciting. And I just thought of this and I'm so proud of this. So don't worry about any of the recipes that you see me making. I am going to include the full recipes in the description below. If you see me making it on camera, it will have a recipe down below. I'll also include the shopping list to make things easier for you in case you want to screenshot anything. Look how creamy this is. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I'm trying to get a good fork full, but my fork's kind of small. Doesn't want to cooperate. I shared that gumbo recipe earlier this week and if you had some of that Creole seasoning, I feel like that would just take this over the top. But as it stands, this is a really good dinner and I'm excited to eat this. I do think it has been a really productive day. I do have some prep work to do for tomorrow. Like I said, I have some beans that I need to prep. I'm probably gonna get these sorted and soaked overnight. But I do think this is where I'm gonna leave you off for today. And then I will see you guys again tomorrow morning.